Hello, I'm Hanson Tipton, and I serve on the Knoxville Bar Association Judicial Committee. Today, I'm speaking with Jackson Fenner, who is running for District Attorney General for the 6th Judicial District, which serves Knox County. Jackson has practiced law here in Knox County for 11 years and has his own practice, which he describes as an all-purpose law firm, in which he practices some criminal law, some family law matters, some personal injury matters, and some property matters. He has said that he does a whole lot of everything. Good afternoon, Jackson, and thank you for sitting down with me today. Uh, we have some questions that we're gonna be asking all of the candidates for the various offices on the ballot this year. And the first one I ask you today is, what makes you qualified to serve in the office of District Attorney General for the 6th Judicial District? Well, good afternoon. Thanks for having me here. Um, what makes me qualified? Like you said, I've been practicing for about 10 and a half, 11 years, um, and I've managed my own my own uh, firm for most of that time. Um, I've had many trials, criminal criminal trials. I've had a lot of contempt trials. Um, I have bipartisan support. You know, I've talked to a lot of people in the community, Republicans, Democrats, who are excited that I'm running for this office. Um, I think that there's a lot of, uh, I think I have a lot of, uh, like I said, support from both sides of the aisle. And I think that that's gonna help me. All right, what do you consider your greatest strengths for this office and, and do you have any weaknesses to work on for this office? Well, the weakness obviously is that I've not worked in the DA's office before, you know, and that's what we're gonna hear a lot about that. But like I said, I have used some of the skills that are needed there. I've, pro I've prosecuted contempt. I've prosecuted, uh, you know, child abuse and neglect type cases in a de dependency and neglect capacity, um, and I've and I've managed people before. So I think that that part is what we're going to hear as my weakness. But I don't see that as a weakness. Um, but my strength is that I'm I'm prepared and I try to get it right. You know, I I care about my clients and I I try to be attentive to their needs and I try to, um, you know, be the most prepared lawyer in the room. And I think that that's gonna that's gonna help us out moving forward. All right. Jackson, what do you think have been the most effective methods for improving court procedures and efficiency? Well, I think that the, the biggest help, obviously, to me, are the, the deputy clerks that work in those offices. They hold everybody together. Um, you know, sometimes in Sessions Court, it's almost chaotic, but we all right. You know, the, the deputy clerks keep it all, all you know, the, 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 the train on the track, so to speak. Um, there are things that I think we can improve efficiency wise. Um, I, I think that with the volume that we have in Knox County, I think that's always going to be some hiccups. But, you know, again, it's just the people that are down there every day that I think that that are that make it the operating machine that it is. And that leads into our next question, which is what additional improvements would you recommend for the future of our judicial system? Well, I'd like to see some things being digitized. I think that some of the way that, you know, people in the general public would be shocked if they saw some of the judgments that are coming out of our courts, you know, held together with tape and post-its and, you know, it's all paper. I think that that uh, it could be improved. You know, I know the federal system has gone almost entirely digital. I think that we could maybe take steps in that way. I think also, you know, we tend to be, uh, uh, well, there's some ways that the DAs have operated, I think, have slowed things down, charging people with felony burglary when they should be charged with, you know, a misdemeanor shoplifting charge. I think overcharging people leads to more trials, leads to more, uh, you know, slows the whole system down. So I think we can improve things from within the DA's office that would help it make, you know, make it more efficient. All right. What is the biggest challenge that you see facing the court? Well, I think one of the big challenges right here on the horizon is we have this uh, facility out the sheriff's office way out in Maloneyville Road where they're trying to have people who have not been um, convicted of a crime coming to appear in court, not appearing in court, but they're going to be appearing via this remote capability, which I think is an unforced error. I think it violates the Fifth and the Sixth Amendment. You know, a person has a right to have an attorney at every stage of the proceeding. And here we are in court where it matters the most, and they're across the county and they can't even sit next to their own lawyer. So I know county commission approved it. I know that it's in the works. I think it's a huge problem. And I know the defense bar is almost entirely against it. And when I'm in the DA's office, I'm going to 
I think I'm going to join with them to try to put the brakes on this a little bit. Now, there are some possible instances where maybe it's useful, but I think what they plan to do, I think, can be very harmful and I think can expose us to a world of problems that we haven't even foreseen, primarily in, you know, the violating the constitutional rights of the accused. And I think that needs uh, we need to address that quickly. All right. Our final question was really written more toward the judicial candidates. We asked, who are your judicial role models and why? And you can answer that if you want, but sure. uh, you can also modify it to who are your legal role models and why? Well, you know, just to stick to the question, I think that my role models, judicial role models are the judges who make the tough calls despite the possible political or public outcry they might face. You know, I'm thinking, you know, the Supreme Court and Brown v. Board, you know, there was a lot of public support for segregation, but they did the right thing, even though it might have been unpopular in some sectors. Um, I'm thinking about the judges, the Republican judges in 2020, who had the temerity to dismiss some of these, uh, the, the election lawsuits that came down that were meritless. Um, you know, those judges who are on the bench, who are doing the right thing, even though they know they can get the public uh, out, you know, outcries or backlashes, they could even face problems in their own in their own party. I think that those are the heroes on the benches. All right. And now, Jackson, that's all of our questions, but we have uh, a minute or so for a closing statement from you, if you'd like to make one. Well, I think that, you know, like I touched on earlier, that the, the DA, I think, the current DA, um, you know, I have bipartisan support in the, at least in the bar community um, um, to run against her. I think that there's a lot of things that they're doing over there that I think are, uh, are, are not acceptable. Murder is through the roof. Uh, we have opioid crisis is out of control. Um, I think that the priorities are kind of not in the right place over there. You know, like I said, we're prosecuting, we're making shoplifting into burglaries when that doesn't help someone who's addicted to opioids, making them a felon. You know, there's things that they're doing over there that I think uh, are not helpful to the people who need help. It, uh, all the while, violent crime is spiking. So I think that there's, we have to reorganize our priorities. Um, and I'm, I think I'm the person to do it. I've been doing this for 10 years, seven and a half years, 11 years. I've been down in the trenches. I'm in, I'm in court every week, almost every day. I'm in Sessions Court, I'm in criminal court. I'm down there, I'm in the field, I know what's happening. Um, I, I've not seen Charm in court, I know that she has other uh, other duties, but I'm there, I'm in the field, I, I know what's happening. And I see the changes that need to be made. And you know, when, when I officially announce, we'll, you know, we'll talk more about some of those in a different forum, but you know, I'm, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to fix this DA's office. All right, Jackson Finner, thank you very much for your time this afternoon and good luck thank to you, you in the election. Thank you so much.